So hi, everybody. So uh, just to start out, I'm the one who's up. Bad nerves. I touched things. Oh, okay. It's, it's alive. It's alive, and I promise not to touch it. I'm wondering, I was wondering if you were going to record the whole thing. Thanks. So my co-authors on this project are Nick Martellaro, Michelle Johns, and Wendy Ju. So I want you guys to place yourself in an autonomous car driving through San Francisco with this view through your windshield. Now, what are you doing? Maybe you're monitoring the automated system. Maybe you're sipping a latte. Maybe you're checking some email. Maybe you're napping. So, did everybody notice the bicyclist over here? And how many of you might have noticed the skateboarder over there? Watch for him again. There he is. Now, if he had swerved into our lane to pass that bus, and the car's automation didn't recognize or respond to him, would you have been ready to disengage the system and react? So the goal and the contribution of this project is to develop a technique to measure situation awareness for scenarios just like this in the simulator and on real roads in real time. So we run studies on interactions with autonomous cars both in the simulator, as you see here, and on the road. So we have a need to align and compare measures of situation awareness between contexts. Are you all familiar with Waze, the app? So in Waze, drivers annotate the map as they encounter traffic or road hazards. And later, they receive subsequent drivers receive notices like, accident reported ahead. Is there traffic? We noticed that Waze is basically a social annotation situation awareness tool. And so our system, which we call DAYS, is inspired by and formalizes that aspect of ways. So here's how it works when it's being run in the simulator. Hey, wait for me. And here's how we've used days in a similar setting with the same contextual events outside of the simulator. Hey, wait for me. So we're still simulating an autonomous car, but in this case, it's on a real road with a wizard driver. So having a way to measure situation awareness during autonomous driving is important for several reasons. First, driving studies often use the driver's performance as a measure of sleepiness or distraction or of workload. But during autonomous travel, there is no driver. So we need a proxy measure to make similar evaluations. Second, situation awareness 
is a predictor of takeover performance. Uh, drivers are better able to respond to hazards when they're aware of the driving context. And third, since we can't know when high demanding situations will occur like crazy skateboarders, measuring driver's awareness at various times throughout a drive helps us understand what factors influence awareness and how it can influence outcomes. I, I guess the basic concern and point here is that uh, automated driving requires very little attention from the driver until it needs full attention. So, DAYS affords researchers several measures of situation awareness. Participants' responses to whether they notice and correctly identify events as having occurred. Where on an overhead map they mark the locations of those events. And the time that it takes for them to lock in both responses. Uh, we also calculate a measure that represents the dispersion of each participant's marked locations for each event relative to the other participants. So these figures show the difference in marked locations for a passing bicyclist on the left, which is both audible and visible, and for the nearby garbage truck on the right, which is audible but not visible. So we could also measure the locations relative to a ground truth, since we know events locations, uh, at least in the simulator. But uh, this gets more difficult for events that are in motion across the scene. Uh, so we chose to let the participants indicate their perceptions. So either way that suits your study. So to evaluate days in the simulator, we created a course of our own design and tested 12 participant drivers' awareness of various events within the environment. These tests were part of a larger study on the role of audio cues in autonom autom autonomous driving. Uh, so the car navigates its way around a 20-minute course with full autonomy the entire drive. The course includes 11 events, which could be visible only, audible only, or both visible and audible. We also include three false positive events of a similar nature to check that participants aren't responding yes to every question. Uh, we use Bolstad's goal-directed analysis to avoid road hazards uh, and created events that include things like uh, pedestrians at crosswalks, uh, bicyclists, uh, emergency vehicles, uh, uh, police cars. Can you guys see the police car in that? It's kind of hidden behind the, the road sign. Um, a railroad crossing and a construction site. And you can see that some are more visible than others. Now, participants were correct about 96% of the time identifying events that were visible and audible. About 83% of the time for events that were audible only. And 58% of the time for those that were visible only. And, and this makes sense because without an audio cue to draw your attention, uh, drivers would need to be looking towards an event to notice it. So the time that it takes participants to respond to questions or to mark their locations after varied from about 2.8 to 8, maybe 8.1 seconds. And these response times correlate, uh, correlate well with the dispersion of marked locations with a Pearson coefficient of 0.82. Participants take more time when they're less certain. Now, perhaps the gold standard for assessing situation awareness is the Situation Awareness Global Assessment Technique, or SAGIT, which is also a real-time questioning protocol. The key distinction between DAYS and SAGIT is that during SAGIT, the simulator's screens go black and the simulation freezes for some time during the questions and responses. So to benchmark DAYS, we're running a further 12 participants in the simulator on the same course, but using the SAGIT protocol, which looks like this. You'll see a car come up on the left. And then you should see the car in the same spot when it resumes.
Now, in, in comparing Dave's with Saget, we've observed qualitative differences between them. So during post-drive interviews, participants described Dave's role as advising them about useful, uh, about potential threats. I'm not super observant to my environment. I think having some type of cue to alert you to events is, is useful. So for them, Days is like a familiar part of their driving experience. It's a service, as if they were using ways. It's ecologically valid. For Saget, participants focus on the stop and freeze, which makes them feel as if the questions are, are testing them. And this makes the system's intent uh, to measure more explicit. Also, while the data show that people are slower to respond when they're less certain, if we view the video, we can see what's happening. Notice how she tested her response on the interface before locking it in. So we're considering ways that we might be able to use this tack and drag gesture, maybe to support some of our other measures. Uh, some participants in the days condition say that they miss activity in the environment that's going by while they're looking at the interface answering questions. They don't report this in Saget, which makes sense because time freezes while they're responding there. Experimenters should be aware of these differences and design their courses to take those into account. So in the simulator, we can compare days to Saget by changing the way that the simulation runs. We can just freeze time. But we can't freeze time in reality. So nor can we position surprise hazards on real roads, such as this flagman up on the right. But as you see, we have ways to work around this. So since real roads include both known and unmoving landmarks, like buildings, as well as events that change over time, such as traffic, we handle both differently. Experimenters can mark locations of known landmarks, like school zones, hospitals, construction sites, beforehand to issue questions as the car approaches them. So here we're marking a location with a pin and entering the question text in the bottom left there. As the car enters the blue circle that you can see there, Days will raise an alert and ask that question. Uh, we can also have an interaction wizard raise this alert and ask questions in the moment. A web interface allows the wizard to be either in the car, if that suits the study, or at a remote location observing over live video to minimize any influence that his presence in the car might have. And just like in the simulator, we can include false positive questions about events that haven't occurred to break the pattern. Uh, we'll now be running another 12 participants on the road so we can compare across all three conditions. And so if you guys are running uh, studies measuring situation awareness or workload using techniques like SAGIT or post-drive questionnaires, physiological sensing, NASA TLX, we encourage you to add days as a complement to that. Uh, we're making the tool relatively self-contained. You can just set some landmark uh, locations, bring it into a car and try it out. Uh, we'll have a free executable in the App Store soon. Um, I think that's what I have. Yeah, the, the rest is supplementary material. So thanks. I, I have a question. Um, sure, so let me have your name and where you're from. Okay, so, sorry. Um, let me have it. Arturo Esa, UC Santa Barbara. Hi. So um, I have a question, I guess, um, in terms of 
comparing this with an automated uh, computer vision system, right? Because I feel like in the first part, you're kind of asking the person, have you seen a, a, either a pedestrian, right, or someone on a skateboard or a bike? Yeah. But we use how the word notice, but yeah. Okay, so I guess my question is, um, in this case, you know ground truth for your experiments, but in reality, you, you really don't, right? You'd have, it's kind of like a chicken and egg problem where you rely on the computer vision to make a mistake, to ask another observer, to then recalculate, or, or maybe I'm just kind of But what role is the something. computer vision taking in what you're thinking? So because how would you know when to prompt the question of is there a cyclist or a pedestrian or a skateboarder? Okay, so right? within the simulator, it's all pre-programmed. Sure. So the simulator is running exactly. them through the course, yeah. And when they reach certain uh, places within the simulator, it knows to raise those um, but questions the, for yeah, them. I guess my question is, in, in the real world, how would you do this? So in the real yeah. world, we're not using automation. The way we are using it is through either pre-noting the locations previously. Okay. So locations that you know, like okay. you're passing a construction site that you know is okay. there. Okay. Or you can have a wizard who does it in the back seat or remotely mm -hmm. and looks through video and sure. can see what's coming up. Okay, makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, great question. Hi, Shams Iqbal, Microsoft Hi. Research. Hi. Uh, great work. I think it complements the previous paper pretty nicely. Likewise. And uh, so all your participants were well-behaved car passengers. They were not distracted. Huh. Have you thought about how this would generalize to distracted drivers? Um, I, I, I noticed <laughs> that there was like video and auditory cues, and uh, uh, so whether that would help. So you mean they're doing something else yes. and then the and app then starts running? And then they get that question. I mean, it, it's a difficult one that you're basically asking a person who's not looking at the road to answer yeah. whether or not they saw the car yeah, or saw like the that. pedestrian. Yeah, I like that. I like that. This sounds like the next study. Um, <laughs> so we have done some work that looks at distracted driving, and we have done some studies that is looking at this situation awareness, and we have not yet combined them. And that's the next, that sounds like a great next step. Um, we have taken this app and remodeled it to um, something closer to a texting app, and then the texts themselves are the distraction and then it notes the responses that way. And that one we're doing with the med school and people are wearing, ha you know, F nears caps and such. So, great. Great, we have a project to work on together next. <laughs> Hi, my name's Eugenia, I'm from UC Irvine. Um, first of all, I'm a real fan of your work and your work that your colleagues do, um, especially, I'm, this is also my field. Um, one thing I was really curious about was, in your experiment, when you talked with uh, the passengers and the drivers with the wizards, were there any implications regarding some of the quote unquote hidden effects of automation in terms of how it affects people's perce perception of control that you find might be problematic? When you say the hidden effects of automation. Yeah, so for example, like the way we perceive control in, um, in settings where a lot of